breaks, we take no shorts. Me and my cohort score, giving you that much more. Nefarious efforts get met with the sword. So, oh, stay loyal you and keep on to your core. Right. A spit of vision. Hey guys, what's the- going on? This is Eric Barber here, and I'm joined with Bug Brown, Detroit hip hop staple and legend. You know, how are we doing today, Bug? I'm doing great. I always, always, I'm always weird when I hear the legend part. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, you get used to it because it's all <laughs> it's all coming up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got it. And you know, we're here at Bizarre Celebration of 50 Years of Hip Hop, man. Um, and you know, you just put out a song with Bizarre Cafe Mahogany. Yeah. yeah. So, how, how did that song come about? Well, Bizarre was like, I got this track. I want to hear you on. I said, all right, cool. And he was like, yeah, it's me, Dango, and Nick Speed. I was like, man, okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so it was like, shit, bizarre? <laughs> Dango, Nick, and me? Ah, uh, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> I felt the same way for the record, you know? Especially, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, you've been like a, without a doubt, a staple in the Detroit scene. For one, I see you at almost all the Detroit shows, you know? And for you, um, how did you start, um, you know, I, with, in your career? Well, uh, I was the worst freestyler in the world, um, apparently, uh, according to myself. And oh. word to House Shoes, who reminds me every fucking okay. chance he gets. Um, but I was the worst freestyler in the world. And so I would trap motherfuckers at the end of the show and, like, freestyle with them. And Invincible was, like, tap me on the shoulder, like, yeah. my G. Here, let me show you how to count some bars. And then Tarak was like, yeah, you good. You just got to hone it. And then Big Tone was like, yo, you good. You just got to hone it. You got to really get into it, right? And so at the time, my sister is a very well-known stylist in the city. And so people would call me consistently Little Jackie. And I would be like, yeah, as much as I love and respect this woman and my big sis, uh, I'm Elsie. <laughs> so, or Boogie, or Boog, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I decided to move to Georgia. And then in Georgia is where I actually honed my craft and really got very tailored in how I write, um, my performance in the microphone when I'm recording, you know what I'm saying? So, like, shout out to Illustrate for teaching me how to work. So, I was to Illustrate for teaching me how to, um, do that like helping me along with finding my voice on the microphone and executing and writing and all of that so yeah that was about well i moved to georgia 2007 so i had to be like attacking motherfuckers with freestyles at least by 2004 or something sure, yeah. <laughs> I think. and you know it's interesting how you you know you mentioned your name's boogie book brown how did that name uh come from for you so wild shout out to emu because uh, homecoming is this weekend right and so my college roommate camila holder used to call me l bug or l boogie and one day i was freestyling with my homeboys and my homegirls from the never empty crew at shout out to eastern michigan university (laughs) and um my homeboy wood was like yo you should call yourself book brown and so my name was a gift in a, in a combination of things, you know what I'm saying? A gift from different people, like a community gift, yeah. if you will. Yeah. yeah. Okay, book. So one thing that I feel like almost everyone knows you for is um, your work with Apollo Brown, the Brown study. And something that everyone's curious about is like, how did that happen? Because, you know, I feel like he was a bigger artist than you at the time, you know? No, nah, no, nah, actually, uh, he wasn't. Actually, um, we were first kind of both just kind of getting started, oh, right? Okay. So... Mike from Mellow Music Group reached out to me, Kev Brown, and Apollo Brown. Like, yo, I want to do this project called UPS, like on some what can Brown do for you kind of thing. And I was like, all right, cool. And then Kev Brown ended up not doing it, but me and Apollo did. So, yeah, that's how that went. Nice. And for you, like, exactly, like, what was it like working with him? And do you feel like, like, was it a very, like, easy experience or was he meticulous? It was all on um, on the internet, so we didn't really know each other at the time. No, none of us knew each other in person or met each other or anything, right? So um, to work like that, you have to recognize that some people's work styles are going to be different, but you kind of also have to work in the middle with everybody, find the middle ground with everyone. And um, yeah, so it... It would have been, I think, doper, a lot doper if we had a chance to actually work together 
in the same space. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, speaking of like your collaborators, like I've heard you on a couple of tracks of like Ms. Corona. Um, you know, you've obviously worked with Dango, Bazaar, et cetera. You know, for you, who have been like your most impactful people you've worked with and who do you feel like you've had the most fun to work with? Hmm. Wise Intelligent is probably the most impactful because it's Wise Intelligent. And then Georgia and Muldrow, like, impactful. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are people that I've worked with that have changed it. 14 KT, you know what I mean? Um, Focus, Three Dots from, you know, Grammy Award winning producer. Diamond D, Grammy Award winning producer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there are a lot of... No, no, no. Please, not that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Pardon. <laughs> um, So, yeah, like... I've, I've worked with a lot of people that were really dope, but nobody is more fun to work with than working class music in Atlanta, Georgia, like my crew that I used to record with. And right. So somebody will a producer uh, will make a track and be like, yo, uh, can somebody uh, rap on this or can somebody throw a hook on this? Or like, you know, it was always a consistent level of everyone recording, everyone doing things, everyone making things happen. So like uh, that's probably the most fun because it was always something new to do. Right. And always something new to see and listen to and like. Whoa, man, somebody gives you their, like, unreleased album. Like, yo, check this out and let me see how you feel. And I'm like, yo, let me bump this in the whip, you know? And, you know, for somebody to trust you with that is, that's always the most fun. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of, you know, we're at 50 years of hip hop. Who are you listening to right now in the space? Mm, I'm listening to Doja Cat. I'm listening to Tyler, the creator. Um... I'm listening to me. Okay, I'm listening right. to like beats, really. But largely, if I'm doing anything, I'm listening to like either jazz or classical, oh, honestly. Nice. Like, just because I miss the violin and I can't wait to pick it back up. I just have to get one and actually dedicate some time to actually learning, relearning how to play. But um, yeah, like, I, I, I try to shy, I shy away from a lot of things, which kind of is a gift and a curse. Right. Like, I don't want to necessarily listen to a bunch of shit that I fuck around and end up emulating because I'm so inspired by it. Like, um, so it's like taking the time to find the inspiration, to listen and find the inspiration and uh, not emulate it, but pay homage to it. You know what I'm saying? So, like. And I feel like, you know, with your album, I mean, you know, the music that you put out, like, I feel like a lot of it is like jazz and maybe even like classical inspired, you know, like it's all very, it's chill. Like that's, that's the best word for it, you know? I mean, I've got a lot of things that aren't that, but I also have a lot that is. So uh, coming out of that mode with a lot of producers that send beats and a lot of people that want to work with me, they always want to, they want that. Right. And that's cool. Uh, there's so much more to it. So a part of what's been happening is like figuring out how to write other things and uh, get with other music. Um, So what can we expect to hear from you in the near future? Um, I got a project. Um, It's more like a manual. It's called Super Useful Tools. And it's Spanatola from... Florida with my brother Slop Funk Dust and it's just really just a bunch of it's really dope I I like it but it's more uh, a precision it's more a procedure than a project you know what I'm saying yeah cool and Boog if you got any kind of message that you'd like to put out for anyone who may be watching this be kind nice is conditional be kind to yourself first so you know how to be kind to people. I like I like that truth bomb you just put out there. And, you know, I got to say, I've actually known Bug for quite a while now. This is not like this is our first on camera thing, but we've known each other. And you are a gen- genuinely kind person. So I, I will. <laughs> yeah, I've been, look, it's, yeah. it's a work in progress. I okay. promise you that for sure. Me too. Me too. Awesome. Well, yeah. <laughs> awesome. well guys all of bugs projects links will be down in the description below thank you so much for your time energy yeah definitely all right peace out everybody